I greet you, my friends, in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a joy to be with you in this program of Journey of Hope on WYTV7. Thank you for tuning us in. We're thankful to God for the ministry of WYTV7. We covet your prayers and support. We need your prayers. We need your financial support to continue to take the gospel to those who have not heard about the Lord Jesus Christ. We're all going through this pandemic, wondering when will pandemic be over? Friends, do not count your days, how many days more of this pandemic, but make each day countable. And you can do that only when you have Jesus of Nazareth as your personal Savior and Lord. Thank you for joining us for the last two series that we have done. One was on a night of spiritual darkness. It was the story of Judas Iscariot. Then we studied a night of anxiety, the life of Jacob when he stole his brother's birthright. Today, for the short time of meditation, we'll be turning to Book of Numbers, chapter 14 and verse 1. A night of tears. That is T-E-A-R-S, tears. A night of tears. By the way, night represents darkness, sorrow, gloominess. But you know what? If you have Jesus on your side, he will even make the sunlight come in the darkest hours of your life. Let's read Numbers chapter 14. If you're a student of the Bible, our text is from verses 1 through 10. But we will study verse 1. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. Let me repeat that words. And all the congregation that is all the people of Israel, lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. One of the saddest night in Israel's history is recalled in our text. We read in verse 1, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. Within the pitiful experience is found at least a partial answer to the question, why do people shed tears? We all wonder, why do people shed tears? And I like to see if we can answer that question by looking at the verses that we will be studying from Numbers chapter 14, and also some from verse 13. The reason why people shed tears, first of all, because of despair. The appealing description of Canaan gives in Numbers chapter 13, verse 32 and 33, had such a depressing influence on the congregation that they were thrown into utter despair and wept whole night long, according to Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Despair arises from seemingly insoluble problems. The Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, verse 31, But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Verse 32 and verse 33 of Numbers chapter 13, of the same chapter continues a paint to paint a gloomy picture of the promised land. Now, let's, work, let's pay attention to those two words. Promised land and a gloomy picture of the promised land. What an oxymoron. With the clear implication that to conquer the promised land, it would be impossible. That is what these people are thinking in their mind. Therefore, all the congregations, when they heard that it's going to be impossible for us to conquer the promised land, the Bible said they wept whole night. We're talking about a night of tears. What possible solution could be found to this overwhelming problem? After all, there were grasshoppers in the face of the giants. My dear friends, when we approach our problem with such an attitude, we often expand them out of proportion 
according to Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. The problem could not possibly as bad as verse 33 indicates. Their conclusion that this was an insoluble problem was built on misinformation. One of the biggest problems we have today, we have a problem called misunderstanding. But there's one that is more dangerous than that, is to build our facts or faith on something that was misinformed. This misinformation about the people saying, oh, we are just like the grasshoppers in front of the giants. There is no way we can conquer the promised land that brought despair into their mind. Like pessimist Israel, we too are often guilty of complicating our problems of faithlessness. That is, we complicate the problem of God's faithfulness. Numbers chapter 13, verse 31. Faithlessness in the face of difficulty has the magnifying effect of powerful binoculars on a molehill. In other words, the people of Israel were pessimistic. They did not believe. They were full of discouragement. They were full of despair. They had no idea that they were just building their facts on some misinformation. Did you know despair gives vent to irresponsible accusation? Let's see Numbers chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God we had died in the wilderness? Verse 3, And wherefore had the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Despair? gives vent to irresponsible accusation. Because of the lack of courage, it blinds the eyes of the people to find the answer to the problem. The congregation turns on Moses and Aaron and murmured against them and their God. Despair is the mother of irresponsible accusation. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 2, we read, we learned that we who suffer from despair, like a wounded animal, often turns on those whom he loves. Despair accounts for many irresponsible accusations made against one's fellow men. When the chief priests in the New Testament realized that they had no satisfactory answer to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ and no effective tool to holding him back, they, they wanted the multitudes to stop following him. So guess what the Pharisees did? What did the chief priests do in the New Testament? They were overwhelmed with despair and thus accused Jesus of many things. That is according to Mark chapter 15 and verse 30, uh, verse 3. Mark chapter 15, verse 3. You know, despair gives vent to irresponsible accusation. Despair often gives vent to irresponsible accusation against God, not only God's people, but against God himself. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 3, these people were actually accusing God of going all the trouble of raising up Moses. They were saying, why did you even bother to raise up Moses? They were accusing God of bringing devastating plague on Pharaoh. They were accusing God for why miraculously did he open a way in the Red Sea. They were accusing God, why did you destroy the Egyptian army? Providing manna from heaven. Why did he provide water from a dry land? Granting victories over superior armies so they could be at last be destroyed by the swords of hundreds of miles from their land of captivity. How ridiculous and irresponsible could the people of Israel be? Yet, we often have expressed the same 
ugly spirit in our spoken, unspoken accusation against God in the time of despair. Friends, it is a sad fact. When despair hits us, we start accusing God. Why did you even have to raise Moses? Why did you have to bring plague? Why did you have to bring us across the Red Sea? Why did you provide manna from heaven? Why did you provide water from the dry land? We started accusing God for all the good things he has done. That is a sign to show that we are dealing with despair in our life. Despair proposes no workable solution. According to Numbers chapter 14, verse 4, we read, And when they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. <laughs> what a joke. This was an unworkable solution. Thank you for asking me the question, why? Because every one of them want to be the captain. And to return to Egypt would be returned to the fierce anger of a nation upon whom they had brought devastation, upon whom they had brought death, upon whose national army was defeated in the Red Sea. As long as you choose to live in the depth of despair, you will never find any workable solution to life's problem. I'll repeat again. As long as you choose to live in the depth of despair, you will never find any workable solution of life's problems. So we asked in the beginning, why do people shed tears? People shed tears because of despair. Secondly, people shed tears because of disillusionment. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 5. Because of murmuring, now growing into open rebellion, Moses and Aaron fell upon their face before the whole congregation and tearfully poured out their heart to God. There were tears of disillusionment. They had given the best years of their life to these people. They had prayed for these people. They had asked God to give them divine leadership. They had loved these people, often stood between these people and God, and tried to bring God's mercy upon the people of Israel rather than his judgment. And this is the thanks they receive is murmur. Disillusionment is often created by unbecoming conduct. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. The conduct of the whimpering coward is hardly a becoming attribute of God's chosen people. Sometimes our conduct is contrary to the name that we bear. Israel was to be God's fighters, for this was what their name signified. But instead, they cried in the face of difficulty. Like whimpering cowards, how often do we bear the name Christian when our conduct hardly is Christ-like? At other times, some becoming, unbecoming deeds places a question mark around our prior conduct. Why had these people been following Moses and Aaron anyway? Question mark. Was it simply to leave the hardship of Egypt? Question mark. Was it only to receive the milk and honey of the promised land? Question mark. Had they all been guided by mercenary motives? Were there no real desire to conquer land for God and make his people strong? Their unbecoming attitude now placed a question mark around all of their prior conduct. An unexpected attitude may bring disillusionment to some soul. Numbers chapter 14, verse 2. As long as things went well, people of Israel loved and admired and complimented Moses. But when the last great challenge confronted them, apparent difficulty came near. They adopted a strange, unexpected attitude of murmuring. Are you guilty of murmuring? God has been so good to you. He has been so kind to you. 
But all of a sudden, when despair hits your mind, when you start believing things that are not true, when you start believing on the facts of misinformation, your life is surrounded by despair. At that time, we do accuse God. Friends, I know many people in my life who have complained and accused God for things they have done. You know, like, for example, they leave a poor home, go to a foreign mission field, God blesses their work. Then all of a sudden, the church has a split. Some reason, the workers leave them. Immediately, they say, oh, we should have never come to the mission field. Oh, we should have just stayed back. <laughs> have you ever thought, what a mockery to God, the God who delivered his people from bondage. He raised a man named Moses, and he brought 10 plagues on Pharaoh's people. 10 times did he give him a chance. Finally, he takes the people of Israel out of bondage through the Red Sea, provides the Red Sea, divides the Red Sea for them. It's amazing how the people of Israel can walk through on the dry land and the enemy is drowned by the Red Sea. He provides manna from heaven's kitchen for them. He provides water for them from the dry land. And now because of some misinformation, all they can do is tell Moses and Aaron, we want to go back. Go back to who? Going back to the people whose army was killed by you and by your God? Going back to the people that your God brought the ten plagues upon them? Many deaths took place because of you and your God? Do you think the people of Egypt will welcome you? Friends, the worst thing we can do in this life is become a murmur. I pray to God that through the journey of hope that you will learn how to have a spirit of gratitude. You know, we all hear that everybody has an attitude. We know a dog has an attitude. Cat has an attitude. So does the human being. But I encourage you through the journey of hope that you would have an attitude of gratitude. In the time of despair, ask the Lord to bring you out of it, not sink you in it. Because as long as you stay in the midst of the despair, you will never find a solution to the man's problem. So we see, why do people shed tears? Because of despair. Why do people shed tears? Because of disillusionment. Thirdly, why do people shed tears? Because of difficulty. In Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 through 10, we read, I'll read it for you. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them, and that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spoke unto the company, that is the people of Israel, saying, the land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. It didn't just say, just say good land. It said it's an exceeding good land. If the Lord delights in us, that he will bring us into the land. Uh, again, if the Lord delights in us, he'll bring us into the land. Why did I say if? You and I have only one right. You know, we all talk about, oh, it's my right, it's my right. Let me tell you, in my humble but accurate opinion, the only right you and I have is eternal hellfire. Anything other than that is the grace of God. The Bible tells us, if the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Joshua and Caleb, who had gone with others to explore the land, tore their clothing as a sign of discouragement and disappointment at the rebellious attitude of the people. Friends, difficulty often serves to sift our souls. Through its chorus marsh, little ambitions, feeble hopes, and selfish endeavors are sifted out relentlessly. Those things that are big enough not to sift through 
are not in the least affected by difficult. Big things like hope, love, faith, kindness, and courage cannot be hurt by difficulty. Rather, difficulty discloses new charm and beauty and power on them. Few experiences bring tears to the eyes of a sensitive soul, quite likely difficulty in getting others to believe in his or her testimony. Joshua and Caleb were honest men whose words were always been believed by the people of Israel. But now Israel turned a deaf ear to them and refused to believe their testimony, according to Numbers chapter 14, verse 7. Joshua and Caleb had seen the land, and they believed that Israel should take it. A Christian has experienced the salvation of which he bears testimony to the loving grace of Christ. To meet the rebuff of unbelief brings tears to any compassionate child of God. If only Israel would believe this man enter the promised land, all their needs would be met, all their problems will be solved. To see Israel so near the promised land, yet not to enter because of unbelief in their testimony, broke the hearts of Joshua and Caleb. To see a soul so close to the kingdom of God, yet not enter the moves, the hearts of concerned Christian, it will bring tears of compassion. And at other times, tears are shed because of difficulty in leading other people to the promises of God. God promised Israel the land of Canaan. These men had worked hard to lead the people to act upon God's promise and claim land, but they refused to claim the promises of God. That will bring tears to you. The difficulty involved bringing others to the spiritual knowledge of Christ, and when they rebel, Parents are praying for their children. Grandparents are praying for their grandchildren so that they would come to the saving knowledge of Christ. When they reject that grace, when they reject that salvation, it will bring tears to the eyes of people with concern. Rebellion insists on one's way. Israel would not have God's way. Rather, they would invest their foolish pattern of life instead of listening to God. Rebellion always ends in sorrow and tragedy. As I close, what is the reason we shed tears? Is it despair? Is it disillusionment? Is it difficulty? If those are the three things I want to tell you, sometimes we shed tears because of deliverance. Such tears are tears of joy. Numbers chapter 14, verse 19 through 21. When Moses had prayed and was assured of the deliverance of Israel, tears of joy streamed down his face. Deliverance from the just condemnation of sin may bring tears of joy. Deliverance through the intercessory prayer of God's people inevitably results in joy and often results it is joy accomplished by tears. You know what, friends? Through the journey of hope, we like to tell you that God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son for you. He wants to take you to the promised land called heaven. I was talking to a seven-year-old boy yesterday. He says, what must I do that I should not go to hell? I said, the only way a person can go to hell, only one way, not many ways, only one way, he or she has to reject Christ. That's it. That's the only qualification to go to hell. It doesn't, I didn't say, oh, your sin will take you to there or your disobedience will take you there. Rejection of Christ will take you to hell. But if you accept Christ, you will have eternal heaven. Israel was delivered by God. That brought tears of joy to Moses. Friends, today through the journey of hope, if you accept Christ, It'll bring tears of joy to all the staff and everyone involved with WYTV7, rejoicing over one sinner coming to the family of God. Jesus also wept a night of tears for you. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night before his crucifixion, he prayed and shed tears for our sins. Don't let the tears of Jesus be shed in vain. 
Find in him the deliverance he so readily offers today. What do you have to do? Come to him today and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I repent of my sin and confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer sincerely from your heart, my friends, please do not hesitate to write to us. We would long to hear from you. P.O. Box 8808, Columbus, Georgia, 31808. If you're in despair, come to Christ. He will give you eternal hope. Thank you for joining us. God's richest blessings abide with you.